Hi, this is Christoph, and I want to give you a quick tour and a quick brief overview over the data that you received uh, on the CD. Typically, we, we email you the, the analysis results um, ahead of time, um, and then we ship the, the printed report uh, together with the CD. And I will go into uh, two different versions here. One is you had an experiment where you had biological repeats, um, or we oftentimes have also customers that just want to do some initial trials, so they, they don't have any biological repeats. So I will uh, briefly go over the files that you receive and what you have to uh, watch out for. So let's start with the biological repeats. Um, so what you get are basically a whole number. These are some example data here. All these individual chip files that contain the, the actual scanned images, image files filtered and really the raw image as well the data, <clears throat> the data file <clears throat> of the, the individual, individual chip and sample. Um, I, I will uh, go to that in a second. Then, uh, other than that, you have the data summary that, that we emailed you already as a PDF file. So you have also the, the Word document. Then here's a PowerPoint file that includes all the scanned images in case you want to use that for for a talk or a publication. Um, this Excel file here um, is the actual chip layout that that was used in, in your experiment. So it starts always with, uh, the file name starts with MRA dash, and then it has the part number um, that it's a micron A array, MIR is indicated by MIR, then species followed by the mere base version. Um, if you look at the file, this is the first page. It shows you exactly the number of, of uh, unique probes, number of repeats. And if you go down to the tabs, it lists exactly the sequences that were uh, used based on, on Mirbase, uh, the naming, etc. This is the actual layout on the chip, so it really defines which cell included which uh, probe. And um, this is just... Uh, the same information, just in a different layout form. Okay, so this is the, the chip layout. And let's look at the ind individual uh, chip data files. So again, on the first page, you have the overview, um, which sample was used, um, which die was used. Um, then probably more important here, the, the background level, background standard deviation, etc. cetera. And um, then here, on the first page is basically the summary. It uh, lists the, the average, the, the mean values of, of the, the probe, all the different probe repeats, the intensities for the probe repeats, and the standard deviation and the p-value of those. Um, so here it's already the, the mean value on the process data page. It still has the individual values for each of the probe repeats, uh, intensity with the standard deviation. And on the raw data page, obviously, these are all the raw data. Uh, then background subtracted data uh, on the next page. And flat, what this means are these are the values that are corrected for the, uh, for the flatness correction. So typically, you don't have to worry about any of these. Um, for geo submissions, you will need the raw data page. Um, so if you want to, to publish your data and, and you need to submit your your the raw data to a public database like Geo or Array uh, Express, then you would just go ahead and uh, export this this page as a text file. So, like I said, typically you don't even have to to look into these. Um, the really important or interesting part for you probably is the the analysis part. So let's look into this uh, folder. The most important file here is um, the so-called multi-array analysis data file. Uh, what this is, is it contains all the normalized uh, signal intensities. So basically, um, here you have two pages, simple normalized data and normalized data. The simple normalized data lists all the micron here and, and the second column, and then all the, the individual uh, samples. Um, what you see here are the signal intensities um, that are based on the on the mean of the probe repeats after normalization, so you can directly con, uh, compare them. 
on the normalized data page, you basically have the same information, just uh, in a little bit of more detail. Uh, here, besides the mean value, you have also the uh, standard deviation as well as the p-value for the probe repeats. You will notice that there are some numbers here marked in black and some in gray. Um, the reason for that is, is that everything that's marked in black is considered detected. Um, those values in gray you will find are typically really lower, very low intensity data. So these are um, considered not uh, as are not considered to be detected. Um, just as a rough estimate, um, typically you're looking at at uh, uh, um, the intensity range is typically from zero to sixty five thousand. Uh, that's the dynamic range of the scanner. So uh, that's a relative scale. Everything uh, below 32, which of course is a really tiny number in this context, is not considered um, uh, as detected. Uh, for more details, you can go to our website. We have a technical bulletin on the data analysis and data processing um, that really uh, explains in detail which criteria, criteria we use during the data processing for this. Then if you're looking at the um, at the individual statistical test results, um, we sent you already via email um, the so-called India data analysis report. So what is listed here are the individual t-tests, ANOVAs, two-way ANOVA, pair t-tests, whatever is applicable in, in your case or what you requested from us. Um, here I'm just showing you a simple example of, of a regular t-test. So in this case, we had a couple of control probes and then uh, a larger group of disease samples. So typically here you see the, the, the summary of what was done, how the samples were grouped. Then on the next page, you see um, different heat maps with different p-value cutoffs. And you see here it clusters nicely together. So this is the case for um, for experiments where you uh, sent in uh, biological repeats. And um, then the, the table here summarizes the results of the t-test. Um, all the uh, values here are listed, sorted by the based on the p-value. Um, so the lower the p-value, the more statistically significant this the differential expression, of course. Here you see the uh, which microRNA it is. Like I said, the p-value then the mean intensity uh, for for the samples in this group for, for this particular microRNA, and then for the second group for this particular microRNA. Then the um, column on the very right, the log two, group two uh, divided by group one is uh, nothing else but the full change, um, just reported as the log two value. Um, so this means since it's the log two value, a twofold change equals uh, plus or minus one here in this column. So you could, right now it's sorted based on the uh, p-value as mentioned. You could also go now ahead and, and just sort it based on the on the full change. So you would want to look at typically uh, values uh, smaller than minus one or larger than plus one if you want to apply a, a twofold change as a cutoff. Um, so besides the p-value and the full change, you of course want to also look at, take a look at the overall intensity levels. Um, we separate them here in the table already um, based on an intensity cutoff of 500. Um, so uh, if both groups, sample groups, show an intensity, uh, the control group and the disease group would show an intensity, uh, lower than 500, we would um, put this below this uh, this line here, and the simple reason for that is is that when you're doing when you're doing qPCR validation experiments, you will find that the cycle numbers will be very very high, and if you're looking at let's say at a twofold change, then the cycle numbers and the associated standard deviations in the qPCR experiment would be would be just so high that you won't be able to detect a twofold change simply because the standard deviation would be already larger than the twofold change that you are trying to validate. Um, so this is the table. And then at the very end, um, where it's applicable, um, 
we put in the a graphic that shows you the overview data um, of, of your experiment. So this is, includes all detected uh, microRNAs and all uh, for all samples. It's basically before the, these are, these are the data before we apply the uh, statistical test. So this was the, the Word document and you will find these um, files in the individual um, uh, folders for the statistical tests. So here in this case, the t-test, you will have the overview uh, graph heat map that show that includes all microRNAs. And then you will see here the different heat maps at the different p-value cutoffs. The Excel file here is um, basically exactly what, what was uh, listed in the, in, the, in the report as a summary. Uh, but here we uh, provide you with all the standard deviations and uh, the individual individual values for the for the individual samples. So here you can sort and and filter uh, however you like. So this as a brief overview. Um, there are cases where uh, there are no biological repeats. So the difference in terms of uh, data analysis and the data that you want to look at, um, um, I'll briefly highlight here. So if you look at the index data report, um, everything is the same. Um, you have, the, of course, your, your chip folders uh, with the data, data summary, uh, chip layout, etc. cetera. And um, the difference comes, of course, into play when you look at the uh, statistical analysis. So let's look briefly at the um, in this data report, again, you, you see uh, which statistical test was performed and how the samples were grouped. But of course, with one sample each per group, uh, in this case A and B, you cannot do any, any statistics. Um, so the only way we can provide you with any, any data in this case is if we use the probe repeats um, for each that we have for each microRNA on the chip. So um, in this case, let's quickly check. This was a red layout I just saw. So let's take a look how many pre probe repeats we had in this case. So this layout is uh, the red layout based on MIA-based version 19, 722 unique probe, probes, and each probe is repeated four times on the chip. So what we can do in this case is, since we don't have any biological repeats, we can use these uh, probe repeats and treat them as individual samples. So if we do that, we can still calculate a t-test and create a heat map. And this is the reason why you see four, let me zoom in, for individual columns per sample, although there is only one sample. So um, each column here represents one of the probe repeats. So um, if you look at the statistics, um, here the, the numerical results, you have to keep in mind that you don't have any biological repeats. So while you're seeing a big changes, um, big potentially differential expression between the samples, you really have no idea whether these are just based on biological variation, really by chance, or based on the treatment that, that the difference in treatment that you um, applied here. So this just as a, as a word of caution, if you're seeing differences here, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, there's differential expression. Uh, you can't really rule out that this is just a biological variation. Um, on the other hand, if you don't see any changes whatsoever, then it's most it's it's easier to assume that um, you don't really have any differential expression in this case. But if you see changes, changes there's really no no way of telling unless you uh, add biological repeats to to the experiment. And um, yeah, basically. Again, you would have to look at the intensity values, the fold changes, and just as as a as another difference to the to the biological repeat uh, to the data with biological repeats, the p-value here is is completely meaningless 
in terms of differential expression. This is not, in this case, a value uh, or, or a measure for the significance of the differential expression between uh, A and B. It's just because it's based on the probe repeats and not biological repeats. All this means is that the uh, that the probe repeats are um, agree are in, in, in very good agreement with each other. So this just as a brief overview. Um, I hope that was somewhat useful. And if you have any questions, uh, email us uh, at our support email, or just reply to the email um, address that you received your, your data from. Thank you very much, and I hope you got exciting data. Bye.